Welcome back to the Very Short Introductions podcast. New episodes will premiere every Thursday through to December. We hope you stick around to listen. From modern drama to slang, we'll showcase a concise and original introduction to a wide range of subjects for wherever your curiosity may take you. So here is today's very short introduction. My name is Vlad Glavanu. I am Associate Professor and Head of the Department of Psychology and Counseling at Webster University, Geneva, and Associate Professor as well at the Center for the Science of Learning and Technology at the University of uh, Bergen. And uh, I am uh, founder and director of the Webster Center for Creativity and Innovation. And more recently, I have founded another um, network, which is the Possibility Studies Network. So the topic of creativity, what is creativity? Um, Creativity refers to the emergence of meaningful novelties uh, in minds as well as in between people and and in society. Uh, It has a wide range of products and processes. They go from children's drawings to the discovery of uh, new vaccines, for instance, or um, breakthrough artistic outcomes. It is a universal potential, but it's not a given. The fact that we can all be creative doesn't mean that we're always creative at, at you know at every moment. And also it doesn't mean that we are likely to express our creativity. So this makes it very important for education. Educating for creativity and educating creatively is an important task for the 21st century. So I I got to the topic of creativity actually in different ways, but I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a bit of the 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 story that I I I kind of know for myself to be the origin of my interest really in creativity, and that is that my my mother was an art teacher. She's now retired. Um, this sounds a bit like a very stereotypical story about creativity because we often associate it with the arts. Of course, creativity goes well beyond the arts. I'm gonna I'm gonna mention a bit more about that uh, in a moment. But growing up in an environment where I could see a lot of paintings and I could see a a community of artists coming together. I remember I I used to go almost every summer to to kind of an art camp with with my parents and everyone would be kind of drawing and sketching and, and producing art. So what got me interested really was not only the aesthetic part and how beautiful uh, you know those uh, those paintings were and so on but I was fascinated by the symbols the meanings people derived from making art and for me it remains to this day an important lesson about creativity what we produce you know when we when we create is not only objects but we produce new meanings new significations we produce new value in a way and when i got to choose later on many many years later my my topic for my phd project i went to folk art to craft so not not traditional or high art but folk art and i remember being interested again by this meaningful aspect of creativity the way in which culture contributes to creativity, the way in which you derive and create new meanings through the creative process. So this was this was really my my trajectory coming to the to the topic. I'm going to actually talk a little bit about some myths and assumptions that we have normally when it comes to creativity and uh, assumptions that we need to bust and and we need to be aware of the fact that actually creativity is often more than than we imagine. So for instance, the myth number one, you know, for many people, creativity is all about art. I actually did a study some years ago when um, I was asking people, I was it was a survey, I was asking them if they're creative and many of them said they weren't really creative and the reason, the first reason given was that, well, I'm not really an artist. I don't produce anything artistic. So in a way, this myth, this bias towards the arts in creativity research uh, and, and, and in society is a bit detrimental to the topic. Of course, we need to foster and understand artistic creativity, but we should also understand creativity as an everyday practice that goes from cooking, you know, to, to scientific discovery, to social change and so on. The second myth is that creativity is all about thinking, getting that creative idea. So we often have this light bulb image that that lits up. It's one of the most common templates if you search for one for creativity. And that again is a bit misleading because it makes us think that we create in an instantaneous manner that, you know, we get that idea on the spot. What happens in reality is that we have a long-term engagement with a topic. You know, we're curious about it. We work on it. We prepare for it. And then we have moments of insights, not only one moment of insight. We can can have one big insight or aha moment, but usually it's it's a whole process. So we have to understand the creative process in in a much longer, kind of longer duration, if you want. 
that's a, a second thing that is important when we approach creativity. The other, another myth is that um, creativity is about ideas and um, we tend to ignore the body and objects. Actually, if you think about it, we talk about creative ideas, creative ideation, creative thinking a lot. But when it comes to it, when it comes to everyday practices, what we do is that we talk to other people. We talk to them about our, our ideas. We get feedback. We reflect on, on what they tell us. We reflect on what we learn from the internet, uh, right? From, from all, all uh, a variety of sources. We use objects. We, um, we make sketches. We make um, all sorts of prototypes. So we use our body. We use, uh, we use materials. And that needs to be more part of the story of creativity. Creativity is not only a thinking process, but it's a, very much an embodied and, and social process as well. Another myth is that the only people who are creative are, or really creative are geniuses. And this is, again, it goes hand in hand with the art myth, because for many people, when we talk about art, it's not just a, a little drawing I make on the side in a, in a meeting and so on, but it is the masterpieces, the, the artistic products that, that live through the ages. So this is a misconception because obviously a, a creative genius would, would reflect this process of creativity to a very, very high degree. But research on creativity shows that these processes, when we break them down, we engage with them on a daily basis. You know, we think divergently, we associate ideas, we use experience from the past, we imagine and anticipate things. So this is very much part of everyday life cognition. It's not only genius level performance. So making creativity more everyday, more democratic in many ways as a phenomenon is a very important point on the agenda. Another another myth is that creativity uh, is an innate ability. So some people would say that, well, I this is this I'm not very creative, or I am very creative. That's how I was born, right? And it is true that creativity starts, you know, creative expression starts very early on. We see it in children's play. So uh, of course we are tempted to think that that some people have more of it and some people have less of it, which is misleading. Yes, when it comes to to breaking down the creative process into different subcomponents, we're going to notice that every one of us has some of them more developed, some of them a bit less developed. But there is no one formula for being creative. You know, we we use different processes for different tasks, depending on domain, depending on on who we interact with and so on. So we all have creative assets and resources to be to use. And, and these we develop a lot over time. So I was mentioning just briefly at the start the, the value of education. It is very important to think about how we can educate people for creativity. And, and this is something that that, uh, you know, educational systems and societies across the world, I think, are, are taking more and more on board. And finally, creativity is not the same process when you're producing, you know, a poem, when you're solving a math problem, when you are creating a new vaccine and so on. It has some some kind of commonalities. So we imagine different things. We we use our experiences, I said, and, and so on and so forth. But we also use very specific types of knowledge. We we use very specific processes. So creativity is domain specific in many ways. And, and this connects us very much to the context we live in. Not everyone will express their creativity in the same way. And, and different cultures as well will have different venues that encourage people to be creative, for instance, in cooking or in fashion or in, in, in science, you know. So when we look at creativity as a phenomenon, I think just the takeaway point, we should go beyond just the individual person. We should be looking very much at the context of the person, at the society he or she is living in, at the interactions we, we kind of engage in, at the life course, the way we develop through, through our life. So creativity is a very contextual type of phenomenon. Everyone has creative potential, but we all need a good reflection on, on what this potential consists of and how we can actually grow it and develop it within our context. So I, I hope this sparked your interest in creativity. For me, uh, it is a, a truly fascinating topic. It is very much part of what makes us human. And it is really one of the key processes we have that connects us to the possible in our existence, that expands the sphere of what is possible, what, what we can do. And, you know, if we if we get to engage and reflect more on what we mean by creativity, if we understand its processes better, I think we, we not only discover more about ourselves, but we understand better how our groups and our society works as well. Thank you for listening to the Very Short Instructions podcast. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify and Stitcher to receive new episodes directly to your podcast feed. All of our episodes, new and old, 
can also be found on SoundCloud and YouTube at OUP Academic.